Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, so uh, I'm going to present uh, uh, this work. Uh, so it's last work, which models playing uh, games, uh, playing games. And the table of contents is the following. So first, I'm going to give a small introduction to large language models, then an introduction to mixed, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium games. Uh, then it's going to be the main section, which is LLMs playing these games, and then the con some conclusions. So first, uh, what are large language models? So unless you have been underground for a few months, you should have known more or less what are language models. Uh, but uh, let's start from the basics. So what is completion? Um, so usually large language models, what they're good at, it's completing sentences. So for example, if I start with uh, one, two, three, uh, what you will expect to get, uh, it's uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you can uh, get this programmatically uh, through OpenAI. In particular here, I'm not using OpenAI. I'm using a local model, which means that these results are reproducible. You can play it with them in your computer. And every time you will play with them, it will be the same because it's not OpenAI, which is con constantly changing models. OK, so uh, uh, you can uh, here I'm using uh, Mistral uh, model, 7 billion, uh, 16 uh, floating points. And uh, here you get, uh, OK, the response that you expect. Now, uh, what most people see is not this. What most people see is chat. So it's chat GPT. So what most people see is they ask a prompt. They ask, for example, what's the capital of France? And they get an answer. The capital of France is Paris. But what they don't see is that this you can do it programmatically as well, which is uh, you have a visible user prompt, which is what is capital of France. And this gets translated. Uh, you can send it through messages. And you go to another API, which is called uh, the API of chat. And uh, then you get the, the answer, which is the capital of Francis Paris uh, as a role assistant. But this uh, chat, these messages, and this uh, chat completion is fake. Uh, it's You don't need it. Because in reality, if you look at uh, here, I'm using just uh, an application of the, I, mean, I take the original uh, visible user uh, prompt. And this is what the large language model sees. So what the large language model sees, it sees this. And then he knows uh, how to follow. And it knows that uh, what the, the way to follow this is the capital of Francis Paris. So here you can see there are some special tokens. So this S here in particular is uh, the beginning of text of beginning of session. Here is uh, the user starting to talk. Here is the user ending to talk. And to be honest, this apply chat template has a problem. So usually you should add a space here. Uh, if you read the model uh, documentation. So first of all, uh, 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 there are problems if you just take uh, whatever uh, you take uh, and you lo don't look into it. Okay, so this is uh, what most people see in chat, but there is something very special also, which is function calling. And this will be uh, important in the talk, which is the possibility to call functions. So a large language model has the possibility to call function. This is now open to everyone. For people who pay uh, ChatGPT, you, you could have played this a uh, few months ago, but this is open now to everyone. Uh, you can ask a question like, what's uh, one, two, three, four, five times five, three, five, four, three, two, one. If you ask the large language models like this natively, okay, perhaps this one he knows, but if you start asking six digit uh, uh, question, it will fail. And this is well known. And this is not, I'm not uh, saying anything. Uh, this is well known. And there are people trying to fine tune models to make it do arithmetic operations. But in reality, one thing that you can do is just simply make the model call a function. So in this case, I'm putting use Python and the model knows that he should uh, use Python and he just used a multiplication between two numbers and he can get the result. And then you get a nice result here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five times uh, is, uh, and you get the correct answer. So this will be important. And how do you do that programmatically? So programmatically, this is the visible user prompt. And uh, in reality, what you should do, I mean, you can either describe a Python shell, or here I'm describing a multiply function. And uh, you describe this function, what it needs to do, uh, some description, some description of the parameter it needs, and what are the required parameters. And you get, uh, finally, this kind of prompt. So this is prompt, uh, it has some special tokens. So you have the S at the beginning, which is it's, in, it's indicating a beginning of session. You have this, which is the beginning of a user. You have this, which is the end of a user, but you have some special tokens. And these special tokens are not available to all models. In particular, this model has it, which is the cap capability of calling functions. 
And for calling a function, you need to provide this uh, saying, what are the two tools available or the available functions with this token? And you can uh, show it between these two and you can put multiple functions. Here I'm just putting one function, which is multiplication, but you can put several and the model normally should classify which one to call. So, and then I'm forcing the model to call that function. So this is something uh, most people do not do, <laughs> but here you can force the model to call a function, which means I don't need to ask it, uh, please uh, don't, uh, don't be too verbose, uh, please shut up uh, after you have done the calculation. No, here you just explicitly tell the model call a function. So you can guide it uh, with this way. And uh, here you get, so function calling is in reality, uh, uh, what it what the model tells you is what you need to call and what are the parameters, how to call it. So in this case, you can run this function and this is what ChatGPT does in particular. Uh, but it, this is in reality function calling and people think that uh, the model is calling function because this is the image that uh, the word provide, but in reality is uh, just providing this. And then it's up to you to run the function. Okay. And uh, usually models, uh, large language models are not perfect. So you can do some regex to clean the answers. In this case, the answer was quite clean. So you don't need to do anything, but uh, you need to know that uh, there exists some ways to clean the, the outputs. Now, uh, most people do not uh, define these functions uh, like all this JSON that I, show, uh, that I showed. Uh, most people do it this way, which is more programmatically clean, I guess. You define a pidantic object and you uh, and I the pidantic class, sorry, and uh, you define in this way with some description. And then there are some tools, for example, in this case, Langchain, but you can use Instructor or others, which will provide this translation from this function to uh, JSON with these characteristics. This is just uh, a help for the coder, but in reality, you can just take this string and you don't need to, to do any of this. I'm just explaining it so that you know that it's easier to define functions than what I showed at the beginning. And in particular, one function that you can take is the Python. Uh, so you, this is the one that I showed as ChatGPT was using, which you can define a Python shell, uh, et, cetera, et cetera, et cetera, with some description. This description was written by Langchain, but you can write your own. And uh, perhaps it will be better. Uh, perhaps it will be worse, but uh, uh, so this is just to say, uh, you can do it yourself also. Okay, so you get, uh, going back to our problem, we get a visible prompt and you get some, uh, so this will be the, the, the prompt that will, the, the model will see. And then he will reply with the arguments, which are this. And uh, in that case, you can uh, just clean it and you get, sorry, and you get the final result, which was the same that the model provided in the Python code, in the Python case, I mean, ChatGPT. So you can do all of this uh, programmatically no need to pass to this user interface. No need to pay 20 euro per month, but uh, perhaps it's convenient to pay this 20 euro per month. Anyway. Uh, okay, so this was the introduction to large language models. And now let's, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium games, which is a phrase that I invented because in reality it doesn't exist in the literature. <laughs> no, I mean, it exists uh, pure. Okay, I'm going to explain. So I'm going to explain with one simple uh, game, which is matching pennies. In the paper, I also uh, talk about uh, rock, paper, scissors, but matching pennies is a very classic game. So it's a game in which there are two players. It's a one-shot game. Uh, each player has two possible actions. You either play heads or tails. Both players will reveal their answers simultaneously. If both choices match, then player, win, player one wins. If the choices do not match, player two wins. So the payoff metric is like this. So if both of them play heads, player one gets one and player two get minus one. Uh, if both of them play tails, uh, the same. And if they play opposite, player one loses and player uh, two wins. Okay. So uh, is the game clear? Because I'm going to, to elaborate on this game. Okay, and uh, you can think of plenty of examples. Here I'm just giving one uh, just to motivate if you need to. Uh, which is uh, Alice and Bob need to communicate sensitive information uh, securely over a network. It has only two distinct communication channels. Let's call them heads and tails. And uh, you have uh, Eve, which is an eavesdropper, and he aims to intercept the message. And Eve is, has the capability, capability to spy on only one of these channels. Okay, this is just uh, uh, one application, but you are smart, so you can think of uh, 100 applications. 
but uh, uh, this game uh, has a very well known uh, Nash equilibrium. So first of all, you need to notice that there is no pure strategy Nash equilibrium, which means I cannot take always the same action. I, I mean, if the if the other person know that I will play uh, heads all the time, then uh, uh, he will always play whatever makes him win. So, and similarly for tails. So the best strategy, or in this case, uh, it coincides with the Nash, will be uh, to play 50% uh, 50, 50 chance, 50% chance between these two options. Okay, and uh, you can see it because there is no, when you when once you start here, there is no incentive to deviate. Uh, okay, so you have uh, uh, the, you can modify this game. You can modify the matching penis game with this uh, payoff. And uh, here, for example, I modify the payoff of player one. He, uh, he went to seven and uh, the others went, uh, remain unchanged. And this will change that the Nash equilibrium will change. So the Nash equilibrium now is uh, as follows. So you change the player one uh, payoff, but in reality, what will change is that player two will play differently. So player one will continue to play with equal probability and player two will play with uh, probability one uh, half heads and probability four fifths uh, tail. And this is unintuitive, but uh, if you do the math, uh, this is what you obtain. Is there a problem? Because I have uh, eight more minutes. I have, yeah, I have it here, so. Uh, okay, and uh, now is the main section of the uh, the presentation, which is LLMs play mixed strategy Nash equilibrium games. And uh, the first question that you can ask is, does the LLM know the game? And this uh, uh, here you can see, for example, here is ChatGPT, and he knows very well the game. He knows uh, what are the equilibriums. If you go to this link, you can see you can see later that uh, he derives all the math and everything, so he knows perfectly the game. You can do the same with Mistral, uh, and you get the same. Uh, the emphasis is mine, but the answer is from uh, Mistral. So he knows very well how to play, how, how he should play the game. But uh, the question is, uh, does he play the game well? And in particular, uh, if you play a lot with uh, with uh, ChatGPT, you will notice that he will always place head most of the time, 90% uh, of the time or more. And in Mistral case, it's the same. So if you start playing with 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 it, uh, this was the user prompt. Uh, I I did some uh, small uh, modification. This is a trick I learned from uh, Scikit LLM, just to get one answer and not to get uh, a very long answer. And here you get uh, uh, the different probabilities. So the probability of head is much higher. In Mistral case, similar. If you play with ChatGPT, it's the same. It's normal because it was not trained to do that. It's not trained to randomize. Uh, but you can let the LLM uh, run code. And this is uh, in particular what I did before. So you can tell it, okay, but now use Python. Now you can call a function called call Python. And uh, this is what I added to the prompt. And you can see that he will perfect perfectly. So he will he will know that he will need to play to at random between these two choices and uh, he will get uh, the right answer. And you can get the same with the uh, Mistral. So uh, uh, here, is, uh, here is what you obtain, and you obtain a nice program telling you you need to play uh, between these two options. And in particular, if you play it, it will play perfectly. So can the LLM play a small modification of the game? And this is the game I showed you before, which is I change the payoff of one of the players. In that case, if you if you do it even for ChatGPT, uh, you will get that the answer is not correct. He will play at random just as before, but he will not randomize it with two fifth, uh, uh, one fifth, four fifth. He will just continue randomizing as, be as before. And if you do it with Mistral, so you can see the link to the full conversation. And if you do it with Mistral as well, uh, you will get the same. Uh, so I, I did it programmatically so that you can repeat it, but uh, you can get the same. So conclusions. So 
different conclusions. First of all, if you ask, uh, despite the pre-existing knowledge of these classic games, so I, here I show you batching pennies, but you also have uh, rock, paper, scissors in the paper, and you all may basically many of these papers in which you need to randomize, and LLMs are very bad at playing these games. And you can, uh, perhaps not surprisingly, if, uh, if, you, uh, if the internet works, uh, just uh, if you ask it to randomize between one and 10, and you ask it uh, 1,000 times, uh, seven will be the most uh, random number between one and 10, which is, <laughs> which is funny, I guess. And it's the same mistake that human, human does, so it's fine. Seven is the most random number between one and 10. And uh, if uh, this is one, uh, the second is uh, LLMs can enhance their performance if you allow them to run code. So this is, uh, you can see this uh, even with GPT-4 or with Mistral or with what, uh, most of the LLMs. And, but the most important part is that there are critical limitations, which is the LLM, when confronted with games that is involve a slightly more complex randomization, then it will fail to, to it will default to be a standard scenario. So it will still uh, go back to the standard case. So in that cases, uh, the LLM notice noticeably declines, uh, suggested that the LLMs are proficient in handling familiar games, but if you start altering the game, it will fail completely. And that's it. The case paper can be found in archive and the code can be found uh, here. So thank you. Thank you. Any question in your room? Um, yeah, so uh, I don't know. If it's for, um, uh, for the the first example of uh, function calling, for the first example of uh, Sorry, the uh, for the first example of the function calling, uh, you 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 uh, describe how you can um, take the parameter of the function from the prompt with the LLM. And then uh, you you send the, the this data to the to the Python function to 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 generate the multiplication or the random uh, value. Can you do the same uh, with the, uh, for solving uh, um, uh, um, like uh, the, this problem? Like you you uh, take the, the information from the text to uh, to to compute the, the information about the, the strategy, and you give it to a solver that will give you the the Okay. The, the number. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the I think that uh, this can definitely be done in some way. If you think like, okay, I'm going to modify the prompt and send it in some uh, explicit case, but uh, it's a little bit. Uh, you are tricking a little bit, no? In the sense that you would like the model to understand it. I just provide you the possibility to run any code. Uh, do it and he should be able to de deduce the math. I mean, okay, this is, okay, perfect, uh, too far-fetched, but, but okay, first of all, the, the, it's already a surprising result that the game is able, uh, I mean, that the LLM is able to play perfectly uh, with uh, in simple uh, classic games, but uh, if you start modifying a little bit, then uh, the model crashes, so, but yeah, the idea will be, yeah, the model should be able to handle these kind of questions. So, so you seem to have pointed out two different things, right? One, which is <clears throat> that the LLMs are not good at generating random numbers. Yes. And the other one is that they're not good at generalizing um, games that you've modified slightly. <clears throat> so, I mean, it, it seems that these are two very different conclusions, right? I mean, they may not even be related, yeah. right? So are, are they related or are they completely, I mean, Right, different? And, I, I think that they are different. So that's why I think uh, the, the paper has uh, more than one result. I think, <laughs> I mean, one result is, uh, well, LLMs are bad at randomizing, but this perhaps is not that surprising. So there is one paper which is uh, randomization in complex uh, continuous spaces, and they prove it for complex uh, com continuous uh, probability distribution, etc. cetera. But uh, here is a very simple case. It's a discrete distribution. Uh, you just need to randomize between two things 
and it's still bad. So it, in that sense, I think that that's one result. And the second one, which is uh, they are bad at generalizing, is also another result. Uh, no, because I mean, it seems that I mean the, the the random number generation. It could be simply that that they don't have a good routine for generating random number. They understand the concept of random numbers, right? Because they've mm -hmm. searched it, right? But doing it repeatedly is something that's, you know, you need to have memory between the different things. I mean, so that I could understand. It's much harder to understand why they were not able to generalize, mm -hmm. right? Because they've been, sh they've shown that they could be they're pretty good at generalizing in a variety of other settings, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you have any insight as to why that's the case? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. This is, I mean, to me, it's it's uh, one limitation. I mean, there are other people uh, trying to look at other limitations, but yeah, this is it's 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 kind of interesting. I think also, no, it's uh, but I don't know. I don't have an answer why. Time for last question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, so you, you showed two problems. Uh, what would be your hint for a uh, solution? So... For a solution. Uh, I mean, one trick could be what uh, you were suggesting, which is somehow uh, include the possible strategies within the function calling. Uh, that could be one thing. Um, I don't have a solution uh, for this, uh, like in generic terms, uh, for, so, for the second part. Yeah, you, you, you try uh, chat GPT-like uh, mm -hmm. LLMs, but uh, mm -hmm. there is, at your knowledge, mm -hmm. some math equivalent because chat GPT has been trained to do yes. something else, not math. Yeah, yeah. But are you aware of some equivalent for the math world? Yeah, I mean, the, there is Wizard L LLM, I think uh, it's called. And, I mean, there are a lot of people uh, trying to teach language models to do math. So it's it's not, which I at the beginning, I was not, I was a little bit skeptic because as I was mentioning, you can run functions. So why do you want them to do arithmetic, for example, if you can already allow them to run Python code? But I think uh, it's, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's for the generalization part. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And uh, did you try your... Yeah, your your problems, but in um, did you try your with problems? that one did, uh, with that one? No, no, but there is one reason also because I wanted to use function calling, uh, which okay. was this uh, just just and... to show that uh, with a simple uh, twist he exactly can solve he, the can, problem. he can he can okay. he can solve the problem and okay. in particular Wizard doesn't have this uh, capability. This doesn't okay. have these particular tokens which allow them to control uh, okay. which tools can use. Thank you. Mm -hmm.